What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're previewing the New York Giants at the Atlanta Falcons for the week 7 matchup on Monday Night Football and boy am I tired of seeing primetime games for the Giants. I just can't do it anymore. As a Giants fan, I'm ashamed to have the whole world watch just the memes after memes after memes. If you guys watch read Twitter, if you guys have an Instagram account and what and you know look at NFL memes and stuff like that. I mean just memes after memes after memes of the Giants every prime time game of us just getting totally dem demolished in front of the whole world. And I expect that to be to be the same against the Atlanta Falcons. I'm not one of these guys to come on YouTube and have supreme confidence about my team. They have given me nothing to be confident about besides Saquon Barkley. But you know, I think we will score points in this game. I think we will score points for sure. It's just that I don't think we're going to keep up with the Atlanta Falcons. I know that there are some injury problems with Calvin Ridley. Devontae Freeman is out. The offensive line uh, is missing and Andy Levitri as far as the offense goes. And who else is injured? I don't really know who else is injured on that offense. But, I mean, we, we have a fair shot. Uh, Mohamed Sanu has a hip injury. He's questionable. Uh, guys who are probably not going to play. Oh, Matt Bryant has been ruled out with a hamstring injury. They're kicker, so um, I guess we'll, we won't see a 63-yard kick in this game. Hopefully not. So, all that being said, um, it is what it is. We'll see what happens as far as the Atlanta Falcons offense, if the defense could stop them enough, enough that the Giants can get something going and get, get themselves another win. But I think we will score points on this Atlanta Falcons defense, being that, you know, their starting safeties, Keanu Neal and Ricardo Allen, are out for the year. Both their starting safeties. And since then, the Atlanta Falcons have been getting completely demolished when it comes to the deep passing game. They've scored, they've allowed 40 plus points in two games so far this season. And about three games, they allowed 30 plus points. So they're pretty much in our situation, except they've scored, they've allowed. 240 40 plus games we haven't done that yet uh so their defense is pretty bad if you want to call our defense bad their defense is worse you know they they do have Vic beasley there it's Carson mckinley uh deon jones is out for the year so like i said there are some guys out for the year on this falcons team and guys that might not play in this game that are key players in their team and should give us an advantage a little edge in trying to win this game but we'll see what happens so with all that being said, let's get on to the three keys to success, if there's any, right, for the New York Giants to win this game. Let's start with the first key to success, and that is air the ball out often. So Eli Manning, I know his deep ball isn't there anymore, and I know every time we try, we try once, and we just completely abandon it during the rest of the game because Eli can't throw it deep. But I think we do need to try. Even if it doesn't work, I, I'm pretty sure we can at least land one or two good deep throws, maybe one that lands for a touchdown. Because Ricardo Allen is out, because Ke Keanu Neal is out, you got Keith Tandy and Demonte Kazi. Uh, they're at safety right now. Keith Tandy had his days with the Buccaneers, but he's just not that good. Demonte Kazi uh, is a guy, is another guy. A lot of people kind of uh, wanted to use as a household name, uh, wanted to use as one of these sleeper guys uh, on the team, but not that good. So I think the Giants need to try to air it out and air it out often. Uh, and that's definitely what, what can help us get a key to success. Evan Ingram will be coming back. You know, he's a threat in the middle of the field and definitely a deep threat as well at the tight end position. I think you look at Odell Beckham as well, who is just deep threat anywhere he is at, especially in the deep, uh, you know, going deep in the field. He can really stretch the field. It's just a matter of can Eli get him the ball and get him the ball on time. Second key to success, the cornerbacks need to be on the same page. You got Julio Jones there. You got Mohamed Sanu if he plays and Calvin Ridley if he plays. The Atlanta Falcons are just like the Eagles in the aspect of they love the speed game. They love speed. They love uh, getting their, their ball to the receivers in the slot. They love getting guys out on bubble screens. They love wide receiver screens. They love the quick passing game. They love stretching the, the field out because they have speedy players. Julio Jones is probably is their tallest receiver. You would think he's the possession receiver. He's one of the fastest guys on the team. Calvin really is no joke when it comes to speed. Uh, you got uh, other guys out there. Uh, Mohamed Sanu can stretch the field. Uh, Mohamed Sanu not so much. I think he uses his 
length more so than his speed in the passing game uh, when going deep down the field but you can't take him as uh, someone that, that that can't move the ball down the field with his speed you got Justin Hardy who's another uh, another uh, fast guy so uh, when it comes to the cornerbacks they need to be on the same page they need to know their assignments they need to keep up with their with their receivers and their assignments and that should help us get uh, the, the dub on Monday night and the third and final key to success is don't let Atlanta's running backs have success being that with their with their scheme they love to utilize their running backs as much as they can uh yes they use their wide receivers a lot you know calvin ridley is you know up there to be you know to be a rookie of the year candidate and then you look at julio jones who's one of the best wide receivers in the game right now and muhammad sanu so they have a good wide receiving core yes but i'd rather have them beat beat us with the wide receiving core and score quickly than have us um you know have us our defense get gassed out by these running backs who can run the ball and catch the ball tevin coleman is one of the best scat backs in the league right now even though he's a backup he's starting now with Devonte freeman out who is no joke as well but then you have you know tevin coleman who can run the ball in between the tackles who can bounce it out who has blazing speed and could catch the ball very known for catching screens very known for catching the the, the dump offs and things like that think of him as another shane Vereen type player and then you got Ido Smith, who came out of nowhere. I think he's an undrafted rookie. He can do the same exact thing. He runs in between the tackles. He bounces to the outside. He catches passes out the backfield. Those type of players, they can really ruin a defense when gassing them out. You're going to get a quick five-yard run. You're going to get a quick seven-yard pass. You're going to get a quick another three-yard run, another seven-yard run. Things like that, you're gonna get a lot of that, and that's gonna help. You know, that's gonna help deplete the defense so they can stretch the field afterwards. You get your cornerbacks and your linebackers gassed out. That's when you use your wide receivers to the best of your ability. So, the the Atlanta running backs are definitely a key part of their success. They wear the defense down. That's how they start. They start wearing the defense down with the running backs, and they stretch the field with the wide receivers. So. Once you take care of those running backs, you have Matt Ryan, who has been known to choke in certain games. I know he's Matty Ice. He's a, he's a, I think he's a great quarterback, but he has his moments. There are some times where he can't get the ball to Julio Jones. Or sometimes they're not on the same page. They start to fall apart a little bit. Stop these running backs and then focus on the wide receivers. With all that being said, those are the three keys to success. Let's see if the Giants actually listen to me. And yeah, we'll see what happens. I hope, I hope, I hope they listen to me. Anyway, let's get on to the injury report so far. I usually start with the injury report, but I did not write that down in that fashion. So we're going to start off with the Atlanta Falcons injury report just because they're our opponent, and I think that's more impor important right now. If you guys want to look at the IR first, the guys on IR for the Atlanta Falcons, pretty big household names. You got Keanu Neal, you got Deion Jones, Andy Levitri at guard. Uh, Ricardo Allen and Devontae Freeman. All of these guys are starters and good starters. These are all potential, uh, you know, key players. They're really key players. So that benefits us greatly in those five starters being out for the year. Uh, not so much being out for the year, but out for this game. So, and then to add to that, we've got players like uh, Grady Jarrett, who's limited in practice right now, Justin Bethel who is a cornerback, uh, 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 I think he's a um, dime corner, so I don't, I don't think he's much of a, a of a big threat, and then they got a guy named Derek Shelby, who has a groin, a groin injury, he's a defensive end, and then you guys like you got guys like the kicker Matt Bryant, that we should be happy about as Giants fans, because kickers have been uh, the epitome of the Giants downfall in these late games, so Matt Bryant, whoever they're going to put at kicker on a Monday night, Probably won't kick a 63 yard field goal. So we should be happy about that uh, Calvin really may not play he was out He went out last week uh, with an ankle injury may not play this week and then Muhammad Sanu same thing But with a hip injury, so we may be down uh, two wide receivers for the Atlanta Falcons So that is a plus for the Giants as far as the New York Giants goes on injury you got um, you've got Olivier Vernon who's dealing with a rib injury now uh, after the previous injury he had but he did confirm that there's nothing to worry about with this injury it's just normal wear and tear he's just making sure he keeps he keeps an eye on it and not aggravate it as much as um, possible 
So he will play on Monday night. There is no if, ands, or buts. He will play as long as he doesn't aggravate that injury or do something else to his body. But it's normal wear and tear. We shouldn't we shouldn't have any worries about Olivier Vernon so far. He's a tough guy too. You know, his first year with us, he was playing on like a broken ankle for most of the season. So he's a tough guy. If it's really minor, he's still gonna play through it. Uh, we then move on to Nate Solder, who is dealing with a, I believe, a hamstring injury. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I believe he was dealing with a hamstring injury. Uh, it's not showing it right now. I don't know why on this 24-7 sports thing. It's just showing that he was on the bike. And usually when players are on the bike, it's like a hamstring injury or a calf injury. So um, Nate Solder, I don't think he's going to be out. I think he'll be fine. Uh, and then you guys keep in mind that Evan Ingram and Red Ellison, we're getting both our tight ends back. So we can definitely run those two tight end sets again. We're going to get the speed aspect. And remember, Deion Jones is not playing in this game. That's pretty much the only person that's going to be able to cover. Who's going to cover Evan Ingram on this team? When we get to the, to the roster comparison, you'll be able to see nobody's going to be able to cover Evan Ingram. So he may be a key factor in this game. Red Ellison, who's going to provide some help in the run game. And, you know, as that second tight end, when everybody else is being double covered and covered, Red Ellison is going to be there for the quick pass. Uh, I think Connor Barwin still is still dealing with an injury, but he's still gonna play. Um, but, but my oh R.J. McIntosh, if you guys didn't know, quick update on R.J. McIntosh. You guys know that he we drafted him in the fifth round this year. We haven't seen him play or be in uniform yet because he's been dealing with a non I think a non football injury. Um, but uh, the Giants have about I believe two weeks to see if or three weeks to see if they're gonna promote him onto the active roster. Um, so they have a lot of time. So he's just starting to practice now. He can definitely be a key factor. Remember, he was he was somebody that put the the pedal to the metal on uh, Quentin Nelson, who was drafted third overall by the Indianapolis Colts. Or not third overall. They used to have that spot. Sixth overall by the Indianapolis Colts. Um, and you know he he's an amazing guard. And R.J. McIntosh really demolished him in college. So this is another guy that can potentially be a key factor on our team. And he he should be coming back within three weeks. If not, he'll remain on the IR. Uh, I can't see who else is injured right now. I think Russell Shepard is dealing with a neck injury, but I think he's still going to play. But they're just going to keep an eye on his injuries. And that's pretty much it. So far, we're pretty healthy. If you guys want to know who's on, on, on IR for the Giants right now, if I can pull that up. On IR right now for the New York Giants. Um... So far that we already know about, um, you know, RJ McIntosh is on the NFI list. Cody Latimer and Ray Ray Armstrong were put on the IR. Jonathan Stewart as well. And all the other guys you know about, John Jalapio, Jordan Williams, Sam Beal, all that. So right now we're pretty healthy and I'm pretty happy about it. So uh, all that being said, let's see what happens for the Giants. Hopefully we, we remain healthy. Hopefully Corey Coleman could be put on in the next few weeks. And uh, yeah. All right, so now we're going to compare the depth charts. I don't know how uh, how far you guys watched this video. I don't know if you guys watched it a lot, uh, the whole thing through. But, yeah, we're finally get on, getting on to comparing the depth charts. So, we're going to start off with the quarterbacks. Right now, obviously, let's just throw it on the board. Matt Ryan is miles better than Eli Manning right now. I don't know why my... All right, so, yeah, uh, miles better than Eli Manning right now. Let's move on to the running backs. Saquon Barkley and company. Saquon Barkley and Wayne Goldman. Um, I, I do like them. I don't know if as a, as a core, they're better than Tevin Coleman and Edo Smith, but Saquon Barkley is just on a whole nother level. I have to give the running back edge to the Giants because I think our running game may be, a, may be a bit better than the Atlanta Falcons. We move on to the wide receiver core. Who's better than the wide receiver core? It, you have to give it to the Atlanta Falcons. Julio Jones is there. Muhammad Sanu and Calvin Ridley, as I mentioned before, may not play in this game. But if they do play in this game, you got to give it to the Atlanta Falcons. The offensive line, you got to give that to the Atlanta Falcons as well. The offensive line is very good. The tight end, I'm going to give to the Giants. Because the Giants have uh, Red Ellison coming back, Evan Ingram coming back. And then, you know, the, the, the Falcons have had a problem at tight end ever since Tony Gonzalez left. And that's a long time ago, like 2013, they've had a problem at tight end. And you got a guy like Logan Paulson starting. And Austin Hooper, who I thought was pretty good, is now the second tight end. So there's that. Uh, so we move on to the defense. Like I said, I'm going to give the Giants the edge on the tight ends. We move on to the defense, the D-line. You got Vic Beasley at defensive end, Brooks Reed at the other side, then Grady Jarrett and Terrell McClain. 
I'm going to give the edge at the uh, the D line to the Atlanta Falcons. I think that's a very good defensive line. The linebackers, I'm going to give to the Giants. They're struggling at linebacker right now because of injuries. Uh, you're starting your starting linebacker um, at strong spot is Duke Riley. Then you got at middle linebacker De Devondre Campbell. And then at, at weak side linebacker, it has Brian Poole starting at weak side linebacker. I don't know if that's like a a, a nickel linebacker type thing there that they're running a, a, a different scheme. But it says Brian Poole at weak side linebacker. So I guess he's playing their nickel. So I am going to say give the edge to the Giants when it comes to the linebackers. I mean, they're really thin at linebacker for the Atlanta Falcons. And then at the cornerback spot, we have uh, Robert Alford, Desmond Trufant, Isaiah Oliver, and Brian Poole. I have to give it to the Atlanta Falcons. They have a better cornerback core right now. Uh, especially Desmond Trufant played exceptionally well against the Buccaneers. And then for the safeties, you got Keith Tandy and DeMonte Kazi against uh, Curtis Riley. Say what you want about Curtis Riley, and, you know... <laughs> He, he sucks, all right, but Landon Collins is all right. He's Landon Collins sucks this year, too But I pre, I'm pretty sure any any safety tandem is better than Keith Tandy and Demonte Kazi So I'm gonna give the edge to the New York Giants. That is your depth chart comparison Final thoughts on the game. I think the Giants are gonna lose this game. I'm going to say 34 to 31. I think this is another game We may score 30 points on just because the Gi uh, the Giants offense is struggling. Yes, but the the Atlanta Falcons defense is pretty freaking bad and they're uh, they're allowing yards among yards among yards and points among points among points and I think Saquon Barkley is going to be a big threat there to open up the pass game especially with our two tight ends coming back we may get a different dimension here and we may open up the, pro the playbook a little bit more so I still think we're going to lose this game do we have a chance of winning absolutely but I'm not going to put my hope too much in it but you guys let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Make sure you guys leave a like if you like if you guys like the video. And comment if you guys, um, you know, your keys to success. I want to learn your keys to success. I want to know you guys' keys to success. And I want to know if you guys think we're going to win this game. Uh, all that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.